I'm Peter Brown from Tiny and Sons Glass. Tiny and Sons Glass was established in 1978 when my father and brother and I were at 575 Washington Street in Pembroke. We're certified and qualified to do all your windshield replacement and repair. Tiny and Sons Glass is a community-based business. We have 12 mobile vans that come to you. If the weather's bad, you can come here to the shop. We have a nice waiting area, TV, Wi-Fi, kid-friendly, pet-friendly. We also can move about 15, 20 cars a day through the shop. Perfect for you when the weather's bad. So come on down to Tiny and Sons Glass if you need your windshield replaced or repaired. Tiny and Sons Glass, 1-888-64-TINYS. Just call. Thank you. Hello, tonight is October 16th, 2017. I would like to open the meeting uh, for Monday evening. Please note that this meeting is being made available through a public um, audio recording which will be used to ensure an accurate record of proceedings produced in the minutes of the meeting. All comments made in open session will be recorded. Kale, are you recording on your own device? No, I am not. Okay, perfect. Uh, statement has been read. I do want to put off, um, we are waiting for Mr. Fine. Um, currently it is 6.30. We will go over the minutes of the meeting because, Gail, you weren't here for mm -hmm. the September 25th. Um, actually, Sheila, I'm going to hop right into, um, going to move forward the health agent updates if we look down into our packet um, the health agent report I see this okay consists of several pages the first one we were requesting to be kept up to date in regards to the field house mm -hmm. uh, they did have to perform a second perk test due to the fact of the results on the first one, they tried to find another area. My understanding is is that they did find um, a better location for the system. So currently, right now, she, our health agent, met on Friday, October 13th, at site to discuss possible solutions okay. for the septic failure. With that being said, the Wolf's Den is still they had requested. We denied at the last meeting they wanted to open their ladies' room because women were finding it um, inconvenient to go outside. And, and I get that. Public safety, though, would Correct. be the, fact, the so first factor. So that request was denied. Okay. Okay, so with that being said, there are no further changes in the status of the other two Pembroke establishments. Mm -hmm. uh, the bakery... Yes. And I believe the other one is the Pembroke Hospital. We're going to keep seeing Pembroke Hospital over and over um, just so that if there is any more news on what the Commonwealth of Massachusetts is doing in regards to that. Yeah. Do we anticipate at least a year of activity? At least a year. At least okay. a year. Yep. But it is under constant um, monitoring. Yep. Okay. And then there was... Um, a house uh, that we had to condemn on Fairwood Drive. Lisa was called to the scene due to police activity. The property is bank owned and the heating and the plumbing had been stripped from the house. So that house we unfortunately had to condemn. I believe there was somebody residing in there. Um, I don't believe with knowledge of anyone so that situation was taken care of. Um, it makes it easier for the police to um, just move anybody in. If, you know, if they see anybody in there, move them out. Correct. Correct. And that's at any time. So if someone, if they were to drive by or a neighbor happened to see activity going on, they have authorization. Uh, perk tests are being, beginning to slow down. Um, that's a good thing. Uh, office activity has been steady but not terribly busy and then she goes into the daily outline um, one of the meetings that we had uh, we were looking for more information to be stated in the activity report 
is this the one with um, the rooster? No, no, this is, I'm still on the health agent's report. Okay. I'm just kind of going through it just to make sure that I hit the things that are on our agenda. Okay, so we had gotten maybe a half a sheet of paper mm -hmm. the first time. We wanted it to be a little bit more in depth, so this makes for reading material mm -hmm. as to the activity. Okay, so with that being said, uh, let's see. Oh, we still have plenty of time. Livestock fees. Um, okay, this is. We've been provided with what the surrounding town's livestock fees are. Mm -hmm. Ours Yeah, I was reading that Matt had a flat rate in some towns of seventy five dollars, some yeah. towns didn't charge. Mm hmm They're all over. Yeah. So I think and this was the application that we have. You need one, Bill? I'm pretty I sure you gave that to me, Sheila. Yes, it looks like this. This is really kind of what um, we. Yes, I do. Well, have. actually, I don't, Sheila. It's yeah, pretty it's, much it's, it's, it's the, the same fee schedule that goes along with the permit. Page two of the permit. It, it's the the permit. Yeah. It, it's okay. I don't. Okay. You want it? Are you yeah. Okay. Thank you. So first is the page of application, and then this is the fee schedule. Okay. So we kind of wanted Sheila to take a look at what's going on around us. Some of them are more, some of them are less. I think one of the things, um, we're dealing with livestock. I know that Ed Thorne and Mike Buckley, under the Department of Inspectional Services, are looking at all the other types of fees that are charged. They, we are basically looking at livestock. Thanks, Sheila. Sheila brought up the fact that zero to ten birds is no fee, but every over ten birds is fifty cents per bird mm -hmm. with a maximum of twenty-five. So, Sheila, looking at this, I think we were kind of pretty much okay with what we're charging. It was this no fee for, for birds. Because regardless of whether there's one bird or 20 birds, the, um, hi, the health agent has to go out and inspect. Correct. So... Sheila, the suggestion was just one bird or 25 birds, 50 cents a bird, max well, 25 free, a year. Zero to nine birds are, are free, right? And then when you get to the tenth bird, right. it's what you're supposed to pay $5, 50 cents a bird. Right. Mm -hmm. You have people that send in 50 cents, cents. for 10 birds. Right. So uh, I think the discussion was... Uh, between me and the health agent to try and fix it is to um, say that you just pay 50 cents a bird. Okay. With a max cap of, of, whatever you of well, that's $25 a you year. Can't, yeah. yeah. You know, not not raising it. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's a small enough fee, but I think that it avoids confusion. Like Sheila said, you know, all of a sudden she'll get if somebody will come in with 50 cents. Um, we don't have the situation where in the beginning I think this was put into effect where we had school projects and, you know, kids were hatching eggs and they ended up with little chicks and they kept them. And so that really is one of the, I think, one of the main focus points that we were looking at. This is just something that we wanted to be able to get everybody's thoughts on with the comparison of surrounding towns and then what we're doing. We're not making any revenue on it, but it's a minimal cost for animals. 
so I didn't know if there was any discussion, concerns, thoughts, motion. I leave it to my board. I arrived a few minutes late, Madam Chair. I'm just looking to my right and I see that you've got no fees circled, so I may have missed a couple of discussion points upon that was entering. The, that was the only thing that we talked about. Basically, the other ones are as is. The main point, um, Mr. Fine, was is that that was where a lot of the confusion in the fee structure we were having was the zero to ten, and then that one bird over ten, people were paying 50 cents. Was there any discussion prior to me entering the room from any... Fees, no. Was there any discussion prior to me entering the room about zero to ten birds from the other two board members? No. No. Okay. Thank nope. you. So you came in perfect timing. Uh, we did already jump through most of the old business. We're down to livestock fees. Okay. On our agenda. Is there any, any thought from my fellow board members um, about changing the zero to ten birds? which is currently no fee. Is there any th appetite for putting a small nominal fee there? Well, my, my I, and I will be <coughs> the first to answer, my, since this has been on the agenda since the beginning of the year, my thought was always it's 50 cents a bird, regardless of how many birds you have, with the max of 25. My thought process on that is zero to ten birds. The health agent still has to go out. It's not covering her time. It's not covering anything. It's just a health service that we need to have the health agent take a look at. So that is my opinion. Um, the other things, I think it, it, it stays with a consistency but this 0 to 10 has always caused um, confusion between bird owners and the department. I don't disagree with and, and I think the issue has come up in the past about the confusion and, and Shirley you just re-articulated you know you have 11 birds so I, I agree with you there. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so part of the problem is people will send in a check, say for fifty. You know, say they got twelve birds, so they send mm -hmm. in a check for a dollar fifty. Mm -hmm. And I say, well, no, really, it's six fifty mm -hmm. that you uh, that you owe. Right. You know, and then so then and now I have to either destroy the check if they ask me to destroy it, or they come in and pick up the check, or I mail the check back, and then they mail me another check because in November I send out all the renewals. To right. everybody that's done it, they send out a renewal. This is, you know, and then just the form and the letter saying you have to register your life. And then they fill out the form, total it up, and send me a check. Mm -hmm. But then, I mean, I've had this happen where, you know, we have a max fee of $25 where people registered three horses mm -hmm. and sent me $30. And I have to call them and say, well, it's not $30, it's $25. Right. So, you know, just to try to clear up. Sheila, what would, we, what would happen if we put something under the zero to ten birds? Just a bird, um, just a blurb. The tenth bir bird um, uh, yeah, I mean, will be charged, sure. like just something to let them know the verbiage that um, if they follow under the, t the zero to ten birds and they've got the tenth bird that they're going to be paying the full 650 for the zero to ten plus anything over. So what do you want? On over 10 birds, put, you know... Uh, well, you're saying the 0 to 10 birds, if they send you... Um, if they have 11 birds and they send you a, a dollar... They send me 50 cents, right? And they send you 50... Yes. Mm -hmm. They send you 50 cents. They yeah, should be sending you a dollar. 50, right? um, just something in parentheses that under, if you exceed this limit, mm -hmm. you are responsible for... 50 cents per bird starting with 0 to 10 or something like that so that these people are aware 
that there it is it doesn't go back to no fee the zero to ten reads no fee so they're going to look at that and say over ten birds is fifty cents a bird right. mm -hmm. so maybe if you want to clarify that you could put something underneath well, I, I, the zero I to ten put it there, I'd probably put it up where you know with the poultry description of what's poultry fabulous mm -hmm. because I mean it just means the where, wherever, just so that you can get the public notified that there's been a change um, and that this is the change so that they're not confused about what they should be submitting to the Board of Health. So then, are you, so are you, um, Ms. McSweeney, is it zero to ten birds free? Well, that's what we were just talking about because mm -hmm. Sheila had said the tenth bird is mm -hmm. 50 cents. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, but if they go with the eleventh, the tenth bird is fifty cents. That's what she's saying. Yes. And then the eleventh bird is another fifty cents. So that makes a dollar. Well, you've got zero to ten birds, no fee. So, if I was to look at that, I would say zero to. I don't owe fifty cents. Mm -hmm. So I think the the way that we're writing this up mm -hmm. is very confusing to the residents. Right. Because I mean, on the on the right hand side, it says <coughs> fifty cents per bird, max twenty five per year. Right. Right. So I mean, if, but it's if fifty cents per, per bird, not not fifty percent. <coughs> excuse me, fifty cents per bird over ten. Right. I think that over the over ten, the number that you can yeah. have. I think the number needs to any number is fifty cents a bird with the max of twenty five dollars a year. I would like to see. I would like to see the elimination of the zero to ten birds, no fee. You had mentioned a few moments ago, Madam Chair, 50 cents per bird. Mm -hmm. um, I, I wouldn't object to, and I, I don't have strong feelings. I mean, I think, Gail, I think you mentioned this many weeks ago when you were talking about would we look at raising these fees as kind of a, a revenue enhancer, you, and, we, and we had that discussion. Can you see if Shane's there? We had that discussion, would, would we... Did we feel that we needed to bring Ed Thorne in this? And I kind of, maybe it just fell by the wayside as far as looking at the numbers there. But, you know, I, don't, I certainly don't want to gouge <coughs> anybody that's raising poultry, whether it's 50 cents. I wouldn't object to having it be a dollar a bird. Um, you know, I'm, I think I, at the time, um, especially when we were making the changes at this time, I would keep it 50 cents per bird. But I do agree with you, Gary, that we would take out the zero to ten birds. And um, so it would be zero to... Um, well, you'll see under bovine. Whatever the, the max, bovine, 25. It yes. says any number. Bovine. It says bovine. Yep. It says any number. If we just take out the zero to ten birds and over ten birds, any number yep. is 50 cents per Perfect. bird. And that makes it easier accounting wise that gives the that gives the public the clarity so Correct. that they understand it so the shale is not standing at the window trying to go through the logistics on how this is this exactly. is set up and mm -hmm. i and i think that that works now the outstanding question is i've mentioned 50 cents gary's mentioned a dollar um i'd like to stay with it please I see. okay um, Thank you. Right now, what we're doing is a zero to ten birds. We're we're already increasing their cost. Five dollars. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I think at this point, to stay fifty cents per bird would be a good faith. Mm hmm. Um, to work with the residents. Okay. Um. All right, I tend I, I I I agree with the the fifty cents, but I would like to have the board turn around and review this in one year's time, in regards to this. Um, and then still keeping it at max. So do we go to any number fifty cents a bird, and that starts that will start. When the next application, what date will that be, Sheila? Well, it'll be effective January 1. Yes. Effective it'll January 1. November. Okay. That's when they all renew. Okay. All, I, I email out renewals for all licenses. Okay. For, for livestock. Yep. Uh, septic hauls. Gary, um, I, I apologize. One thing that we did talk about was is that Ed Thorne and Mike Buckley are sitting down and they're coming up with a 
recommendation for the board in regards to all other fees other than livestock in regards to either raising them, keeping them the same, or getting rid of. So that will be coming from the Department of Inspectional Services. I saw that in an email from uh, uh, our, our administrator. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, I have a question I, I would throw you know, to, to the comment that you just made. Do you think that the board should be part of that discussion with the town accountant and the head of inspectional services? I don't know. Um, looking at all the, you know, the cost of, of septic inspection, septic system licenses, I really don't think that, I don't have a problem with Mike Buckley taking a look at any numbers. Um, you know, the livestock is falling back on us the permitting, um, they've already come up with suggestions, and then ours is the final vote. Okay. But I can't go through accountant-wise and do numbers, nor can anyone on this board, because we're not equipped or educated to be able to do that in regards to the town's fiscal and financial situation. Um, there's a page and a half, you know, bakery, license fees, license fees for all kinds of things. I, I just think that we're having a hard enough time getting through what we've got on our list this year. Mm -hmm. I would like to look at their recommendations and then discuss. Okay. Because they have the figures. Yep. Yep. Uh, um. <coughs> I I personally would like to um, I would like to be able to to float. Uh, I'd like to see it be. I'm not saying a, a, a joint committee, but I, I'm just wondering if the board could be involved to a greater extent than just listening to their recommendation. I don't feel strongly about it. I just think with the Department of Inspectional Services being new, I'm a little sensitive to uh, things just being put in their lap that were once in the board's lap. So I'm not ask, I'm not suggesting that I would want to act as an accountant and go over all the same numbers that Mike Buckley would, but I would like to see if they would be willing to entertain Mr. Thorne, Mr. Buckley, having us be a part of that discussion. That just be my opinion. I'm not. Mm -hmm. I don't feel strongly about it, one way or another. But mm -hmm. I, I am, and I'll be honest with you. I'm, I'm the line that has, the line hasn't been drawn in my mind clear enough about what munis, what the new department is doing versus what the board is doing. So I'm not one to readily say, well, let them do it. Um, you could make an argument. Your your argument is very cogent and valid. So I'm not saying you're wrong. It's just I would like to be involved in the process. That's mm -hmm. that's just my two cents. But okay. I'll obviously go with what the board wants to do as a board. I don't see um, any problem or if Mr. Thorne and Mr. Buckley could, even after um, they've met and they've gone through and gotten to a certain point, maybe brief you on what they've been able to do. I don't think that that mm -hmm. would be well, I too know time consuming consuming for you to be kept abreast and for them to, to know the steps that they're taking. Because mm -hmm. they've, they've I would broken suggest it, something like that. Right. They've broken it down, I think, per, um, it's a minimal increase, if anything, on, on some items, not all items. They're comparing town by town. Um, you know, if, if Gary wants to look at it, I, I, I don't feel that the board needs to be looking at those kind of things because it is in it is inspectional services now. Um, ours is is you know livestock. Um, we all know that inspectional services is, is right now. Um, not quite sure. Is she not no, there? No shame. Okay. No shame. No shame. 
12 o'clock is at 7, and then his meeting is at 7.30. Okay. So you say whenever you're ready. Okay. Do we get a motion? Do we have a, um, we, we're getting there. We we're got still, off track of Yeah, we're still little. discussing because I, I wanted to make sure I had made an incorrect statement to, to Gary. Um, so, would anybody like to make a motion going back to this fee schedule in regards to what we have discussed on poultry? I guess okay. I will make a motion to raise all bird feed starting from zero to the max of $25 a year um, for it to be 50 cents per, bir per bird. That would include chicken, roosters, peacocks, ducks, geese, guinea hens, peafowl, swans, turkeys, pigeons, pheasants, quail, um, gross game, and show birds. And that pear tree. So that will leave us with any number at 50 cents per bird. Correct. Okay. Uh, do I hear a second? Hearing none, I would like to make a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And Gary opposed. Is, Gary is opposed on the birds. Poultry section. Bovine, is there anything you'd like to discuss about that? Which is buffaloes, cows, goats, pigs, sheep, porcine por 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 not mentioned, or any other. So currently we're charging for any number $5 per animal with a max of $25. Is there any appetite for raising the maximum to $35? I'm not inclined to do so without... We've got a lot of buses in this town. I'd well, like we're, to we're, we're, we're no, we don't have horses yet. Are we... Dealing, we're not dealing with the horses. What we're dealing with cows, goats, pigs, sheep, buffalo. The horses, the mules, and the donkeys, ostriches, those are either personal uses. I'm sorry? Weren't you talking about this one? No, I was referring to the bovine. Okay. The, the okay, bo right here, bovine. Yeah. Uh, my, my, my comment was more of a... <coughs> A blanket statement regarding all the categories poultry bovine equine and the rabbits which all have a maximum of $25 I was just floating out it's actually $25 across all of them so like the most anybody would pay Under is 25 horses, understood cows. understood got it so if, so I was floating out the idea of raising that cap to thirty-five dollars. I just want to make sure that it was clear that the most anybody would pay would be twenty-five dollars. Yep. No matter how many different animals they have. Understood. Thank you, Sheila. Um, I'm not prepared at this time to make that kind of uh, an increase. It's just my opinion. Chair. So the maximum that anyone would pay, let's give a uh, example, five chickens, two horses, a couple of ostrich, regardless per animal, no household will pay more than $25 combined, Sheila? That's correct. That's how it is now. Right. So it's raising... The chicken and the, I, I think that the chicken stays the same, Mr. Fine. Is well, that what you're well, talking about? Part part of my opposition to the motion made by Gail was that there was part of was that there was no mention of touching the max. Um, so well, my my thought process coming in here was to because as Sheila had said, there's a max regardless of whatever combination of animals. We have at twenty-five dollars. I was floating the idea of raising that to thirty-five dollars. Just, just trying to see what the appetite the board had. Well, looking at the surrounding town livestock, yeah. um, I I really don't feel 
that I would be inclined to raise it more than $25 a year. Um, and I think there, we, we stay in line and in average in regards to the other towns around us. I guess I don't want the people of Pembroke to think that because we've become a right to farm that we're now increasing our fees. I think 25 my opinion is I think $25 and the study that was done here, 25 is the largest um, denomination flat fee for $25. Mm -hmm. There's another town for 20 Hanson has a registration fee that covers all horses, then $10 per with a $75 max. The pigs. How, Kingston. How, you know, it was 25, same, 25. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. The only livestock fee is $15 for indoor pigs in Marshfield. Indo okay. Okay. Um, um, you know, Kingston there's none in no Halifax. Fee. And there's a flat, flat fee in Duxbury for $20 non commercial. So, staying in Guy. Well, Ms. Mr. Uh, Fine, was that a motion? No, no, no. I was no, just, I was was just throwing a out discussion. For discussion. Okay. You know, uh, and I'm, I'm voicing my thoughts here with, with not a lot of scientific research. Uh, the, the surrounding communities, and Sheila, thank you for doing that and making the research. I mean, it's a small sample size. Mm -hmm. um, it's all our touch towns. You know, yeah. I, I mean, I'm. I'm in the I'm in the wedding business, and and I, the the fees that one ch that the towns charge for marriage licenses mm -hmm. run the gamut as low as five dollars and up to forty, and and I don't want this to be a revenue, to be a, a revenue generator, and I certainly to echo your point, I don't want it to be punitive to the residents of Pembroke. If people want to have animals, I would encourage that and support that. I just look at the fee, the twenty five dollar max is maybe being a fee. And I don't know this to be true, but maybe being a fee that we've had $25 max for quite some time, at least since I've been on the board. And it just might be time to just bump it up. That was mm -hmm. my two cents. I'm, again, I'm not, I'm not you know, digging my heels in the sand. I certainly welcome opinions from uh, my fellow board members. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to float it out. You know, when I said the marriage license fees, I see that sometimes will have a fee of $15 and it will just be on the books forever. Mm -hmm. No one takes a look at it. And this fee, you know, we might agree to take a look at it a year from now, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. we probably wouldn't, you know, we'd probably probably stay the same, I guess. So I was just thinking maybe it's time to raise it a little bit and, you know, mm -hmm. but. All right, well, I'll tell you what, we've made a motion in regards and, and accepted a motion um, in regards to the poultry. Uh, the rest of it, I think that we should uh, slate it for the um, next board um, that meets in October mm -hmm. of next year. So we we'll again take a look at it well before the application date. So how about maybe September? Sure. That September sounds good. Look at them again. Yep. Okay. And then before I have Mr. Clark, uh, Bob Clark come in. Um, Wait, are we, are we done with this? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no. I'm sorry. I thought you wanted to do yearly for all of them. I'm sorry. No. Well, well on to. Well, I, I guess look, these fees right. all look okay, but I think we're in trouble with the. We have a pad a bad pattern with the rabbits with zero to five animals, no no fee. So I, much like we have the poultry, zero to ten birds, no fee. Okay, so, I'm going to have to stop well, you right there. One second. Sure. We're going to come back to this. I want to get Bob Clark in here before he goes to it. He has to be at a meeting at 7.30. Yeah. Are we, are we are going to, um, for the next meeting, put Lorna Ave? Or we're going to vote Lorna Ave without Shane you want to take presenting a look, it? Take a look. Did you look at the write-up? Not yet. Okay. Let me get Mr. Clark. Okay.
So Shane is not able to attend, I guess, in regards, regards to the, um, and we'll take this up after Mr. Clark leaves, the upgrade variance request, reduction the separation between the bottom of from five to four feet. We've approved many of these. So maybe when Mr. Clark leaves, we can do that in the minutes of the meeting, and then we'll get back to the animals. And we'll make sure we have that all cleaned up enough. He's in the box and he has zoning. He's in for and Shane. Um, um, gotcha. The big question had come up in regards to the animal waste bags. We have stations. We have no bags. So. No, we have bags. No stations. We have no stations. So he's coming in to talk to us about in regards to DPW. I don't know if he has any special funds or anything that he can add Who's to. This? Bob Clark. Oh, okay. And he is on the conservation. Is she chair? Is she chair? Mission. He was. Um, I, uh, no, there's a new chair. Okay. He's with conservation. Um, and they had, they got the bags and the stations previously, so let's just get. We brought in props. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Hi, Bob. Bob, do you know everybody that's here? I think so. I've met everybody. I don't know okay. if I really know Perfect. them that well. I'm Gary Fine, Bob. We've met before. No, I know. Gary, <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> I just brought you up. so we know what I wanted to talk. Uh, Correct. Thanks for coming in. Thank no. you. Uh, about in August sometime, someone from DPW contacted me and said uh, that they had received communications from you people wanting some of these put up places in town. Mm -hmm. Except DPW doesn't know what has none of them. The ones we've had conservation's been playing with over the last few years. We've been filling them. Mm -hmm. I don't know really where they came from to start with. They did come from the Board of Health. We started yeah, that I was back say, in like 19, um, 2008. Yeah, we it was quite a that. while ago that yes. we got the first because we've been filling them and repairing them and, and they're down so there's really only three. There's and only so three. There's three out in the community? Yeah. So Tubbs Meadow. Are? Tubbs Meadow, both ends, yeah. and Veterans Forest. Okay. What's uh, the third one? Veterans Forest, up by the middle okay. school. So, and does uh, the DPW, um, when the bags are used, does the DPW empty the barrels? No. no. Okay. This is this is some of the things I wanted to right. to bring up before we get too far. We just maybe from a, from conservation standpoint, first of all, the bags are nice. Mm -hmm. Except most, a lot, of, a lot of the people use the bags and then leave them on the side of the path. Well, we've had problems with the people who we hire that does the mowing, because oh. you have all the bags on the path and they hit the mower, and you know what happens. Mm, to the yeah. blade. And so they're, they're not necessarily yeah, the lawn now. yeah, they're not necessarily overly happy with that. But the other side of the coin is. When we first had some problems with, not I shouldn't say problems, the DPW, uh, I'm being, trying to be clear, did not really want to empty the con containers, 90% dog mm -hmm. in it. And uh, back to cut point, they said they weren't going to empty our barrels, you know, if there were dog. Uh, at Tubbs Meadow, we got a dumpster that has taken care of that problem and we really don't have a barrel I think at the far end of Tubbs Meadow anymore and I think they're still emptying the one up the Veterans Forest because it's, somebody's emptying that one but it doesn't mm -hmm. get used quite as much. So we have that other problem if we put put them out and people use them we got to make sure somebody's going to be able to dump them after they the barrels start filling up. Mm -hmm. And DPW was pretty strong that they didn't feel that that was their job to dump the barrels when they were mostly, you know, with, with dog. Uh, is that because of the weight? Is that because no, of the because of the, the weight and the, 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 the smell and, <laughs> and and everything else? I, I don't know. I didn't. I wasn't my job. I just I just were know they. I just know we had a had a 
had a, a lot of discussion about that part of mm -hmm. it. Uh, but seeing those problems, my thing was, where would you people want them? And then we got to figure out how many we want and who's going to pay for them and who's going to take care of them. I mean, so right, right now, now I, I, I take care of filling them that bags when they run out. And I have been doing that. Well, Mark Ford did it when he before he passed on. And so conservation has been doing that. Conservation has been buying the bags and all. Mm -hmm. And I think we bought a few of these. Uh, this one, let's get some of that. This is one made out of poly something. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, it looks nice. It stands nice. It breaks nice. Mm -hmm. uh, we've done a, a lot of repairs. You can see this one has just was in the shop because someone had poked a hole in it. Uh, the bottom is locked, but it doesn't take much of anything to pop the locks. Mm -hmm. So the one at Tubbs Metal has a different, we've made our own lock on that one because that one, they were dropping the bottom out and just throwing the bags around everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, the one at Veterans for us, we haven't had any problem with. It depends what kind of people are using the area. Right. Now we also had them at the ball fields. There's no more at the ball fields? There's none at the ball field that I've been taking care of and all. In fact, the ball field says no dogs allowed. Uh, but oh, I don't so know what, I think that's only change. inside the fence the way I would interpret it. But mm -hmm. I know I don't know if that's it. I know that we did. We put one down at the Madacusett yeah, Street. Yeah. And we, we had uh, a while back a tremendous amount of, I don't remember how many were up, but they were breaking. These things break very, very, very easily. Doesn't know for actually they break easily if you want to break them. In other words, and uh, we. So from what I'm hearing, we we had them. Um, they were maintained in regards to the bags being put in them, but the problem that we have had is they have been destroyed or weathered over time. And people who are using them, especially with the um, in the meadow, mm -hmm. they are not putting them in trash containers. No. And then the question comes to who empties the trash containers. Yeah. If they're not using them, are they in fact serving their purpose? Correct. Is the feces, while it should not be left on the ground, it should be picked up. Is, does the feces break down quicker than a plastic bag left out to the element? And then... Yeah. That, yeah. Um, and the throw a, but if you fill on a barrel full of feces, you're, you've, got a vac you've got a vacuum of maggots mm -hmm. and all kinds of other things. Yeah. Um, the only thing that I could think of that, that would cure that, but it's not going to cure the fact that people are going to throw it on the ground would mm -hmm. be to have a dumpster emptied, mm -hmm. a small dumpster placed, mm -hmm. and have that emptied for the dog, but that's not going to help people put them in the, in the areas exactly. they're supposed to be. Now, they do claim that some of the bags now are biodegradable. Mm -hmm. So, I had just had a bunch of the literature on the subject printed mm -hmm. off the other day. Uh, mm -hmm. at, they make these out of uh, other materials. They make them out of aluminum and they make some out of steel. Uh, I haven't done a lot of investigating into any of it till we figured out what we were really mm -hmm. going to be talking about and whether we you know, wanted to go which way. Is there some way that you could find out uh, the costs of the different materials? Yep, they're all right in... Okay. They all, these for what for what in other words I'd really before buying I'd want a lot more information. Okay. This is a good idea of, of what they are. They're running in the general neighborhood of a low end of sixty dollars a piece okay. to one ten, one twenty for some of the higher quality higher price ones or aluminum uh, and things like that. Would you have an objection for um, Sheila to copy that for us? Um, you can have a pack. Okay. Which, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, it, it's some of it's a duplicate, but it it gives you a, a little idea of what's going on. Mm -hmm. But I think my thoughts were that first of all, we got to have an idea where we might want them. Where we want them, and, and, and where right. we want how them, and then solve our problems for that area, and how many we're going to 
be doing because again maybe if we're buying more than two or three mm -hmm. there's a better deal than what we see on on here i don't i haven't looked at it that close yet right okay okay Gary, do you have any questions? Yeah, well, I, I have a comment. Bob, first, thanks for coming in and, and showing the sign. Yeah. Um, I'm a pet owner. Yeah. I walk my dog every day, and I carry my little poop bags, yeah. and I, whether, even if he poops in the Monroe Street pit, yeah. I still pick up, pick his, up yeah. his dog, and I throw it away. Um, so in spirit, I agree a, th a thousand percent that we as a community should have those, and when I say everywhere, I'm I'm using the ter I'm yeah, using yeah, it, yeah. but we we should have them. I mean, yeah. but clearly you you've pointed out that it, not that it's fraught with problems, yeah. but you know dumping them, people yeah. destroying them, yeah. people th putting it in a bag and throwing it yeah. on the street, and getting be destroyed by a mower. So we have problems. Um, I wouldn't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater, no. and I certainly wouldn't want to say. Madam Chair, that we should create a subcommittee on poop bags. But that being that being said, are you laughing at me? You are. Yeah. I'm not. That being said, I would like to see our health agent. I would like to see Bob. I'd like to see someone from the DPW because I I'd, I'd like to see a bunch of people, a group of people having a little bit of dedicated time to look at this issue just to see. If Pembroke as a commun community wants to say, you know what, we can't make this work, there's just too many issues, or with, s with some renewed PR, you know, a PR campaign, things going on the website, and, and a, uh, an organized effort from conservation, DPW, the Board of Health, maybe we can make this work because it would be a shame, in my opinion, to say, and all the reasons, the negative reasons that were floated up, they're valid and they're problematic. But I, I yeah, and, and I probably I, should. I shouldn't have brought up all the negatives. But I like to look at no, that's my okay. negative side first. If I can solve my negatives, the positive side comes along mm -hmm. and easy. And a lot of this too is it's really going to be on location. Yeah, um, we've got trail walks down past the herring run. Yeah. Now a lot of people will walk their dogs down there. Yeah. you know, mm -hmm. it's going to be upon location as far as. Um, that's conducive. It's not going to be just a place where um, it's going to be isolated to different spots. Right. And you know, I was thinking back, one of the, why, how this, I think, even ended up on our agenda was is that I was in the town clerk's office and there was a whole pamphlet holder about waste excretion from pets and how, you know, being left out into the element and so on. I thought, hmm. And I was reading it and I thought, wow, I, those are facts that I did not know, which mm -hmm. is how yep. I think everything kind of evolved. But um, I, I tend to agree with Gary. I'd like to see if we can look at it. I mean, if we have them, maybe strategically, we can come up with a plan. Um, the conservation or Board of Health back in 2008, Gail, do you know? Board of Health did it. Yeah. <coughs> and sure that's why I'm yeah. thinking mm -hmm. location, because I was very surprised that it was taken out of the parks. Yeah. Because a lot of a lot of people go down there, they'll watch the kids, they'll walk their, their dogs. Mm -hmm. I think they probably got broken and there was no more to yep. replace mm -hmm. them. I mean, yep. for a while we were mending as best we could, and then it got to the last, the three we had that we're staying. We've we've kept with, and uh, no one pushed the no one pushed the issue. And well, you uh, know, when you say no one pushed the issue, and and I look at Pembroke's recycling effort, yeah. and I I've been involved in that for a number of years, and I think that there's a there's more than a fine line difference, Bob, between a recycling community and a community that recycles, and I yeah. and I think Pembroke is slowly moving from a community that recycles slowly to a recycling community and there's been a lot more awareness and I, and I think the town is getting on the same page and, and I'm and I, I'm looking at this in the same way I'd like to see some type of a unified effort among the different departments so we dis yeah. figure out how we can make this work mm -hmm. and not that I want to plaster them all over the town but I think they could be in a few more locate three in the whole well, town. Not, I, I mean, put them in in the, the main locations where people are taking really? their. Right past the Herring Run down here, we have a nice walk. Yep. 
that nice yeah, little there, cottage there, that you can walk through. There are a number of good spots. And a, a lot of people take their, their dogs down there for a walk at night and, it, you know. Uh, I say, it, but it, it, we need to know, I think, too, as you say, get together because it's kind of fell on conservation. Right. You know, we kind of inherited it and Mark Ford kind of, when he was alive, mm -hmm. you know, it was kind of his his thing. He took care of all that. Well, and Mark got sick and all, I picked up for him. And so I've been the filler of 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 the bags of and, the, and trying the to keep bags. them going, <laughs> but at the same time not doing any more because we were, you know, almost felt like we were having a uh, we're losing battle because we are losing well, our units, a and, yeah. and that, no, right. at, at ninety or dollars a piece, mm -hmm. we just you no. Know, well, yeah. do we put another ninety dollar one out, or or what? And it kind of just went down to that. Yeah, now, I think you're right. I think we need the town needs them in in, in certain places. And yes, but we also have okay. the. We got to make sure we can get rid of it after it exactly. gets picked and up. Exactly, and, and I and I wrote notes about because I'd like to have this put on the. Um, a further agenda or a discussion with the health agent um, in regards to getting health agent, DPW, and conservation together, locations, the dollar costs, mm -hmm. and the debris, who and how. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think it at it's least starts a mode. conversation. Right. Where that conversation will lead, I don't know. At least it's a conversation. And, and maybe all it is is a simple education. Um, campaign. One other thing I would like oh, to see, if possible, too. for them to be put into a lidded area. Um, what area? A lidded area, under a light. Oh, yeah. light. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Okay, no, no, well, no, well, it's me. Yeah, yeah. And, that, and that certainly can be under location. Yeah. You um, know, um, I, I think, I'm, I'm hoping that's that that'll be some kind of a deterrence because if they're in the dock and somebody can just go over and do what they want yeah. to. I'm not sure if so much at night. I think it's more of four or five kids get together. Sure. You know, yeah. And yeah. it looks like a mm -hmm. you know, target. Yeah. yeah it target like practice. Something we're doing. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, perfect. I'll leave, I'll leave Thank these you. here. Yeah. If you, you could. Have, um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Madam yeah. Chair. Would you, thanks Bob, Could, would it be possible for us to ask our health agent to speak with the DPW conservation and and give us, have something prepared for us next week so we can maybe decide? Um, I think next, um, our next meeting may be too soon, but I think by our, um, I think if we ask her to, um, by December 11th, to be able to come back, that way we can have a plan in process Excellent. before the spring season. So see if um, what we're asking Sheila is to have the health agent um, look into this with the herself, DPW and conservation, location dollars, debris, who and how, and maybe an education campaign. And along with that, I'm just going to I'll give you this if you can start a file on poop bags. We'll you just said, and if you can hand that, this is, those are the bags. You oh, have doggy poop bags and then the multiple waste dispensers, okay? Okay, do you have the... Um, doggy poop. I just have that. That's a dispenser, and there's two different kinds okay. of dispensers. No, nope, I don't this have the Monarch. This is multi, yeah. You don't have a Monarch. No. Oh, actually, let's give, give them all, all back. Sheila, let's give it all back to Sheila and make us. Here, we'll give Sheila, it. Have her give it to Lisa. Have her give it to Lisa, and those are the options. Is there a motion in there, or do we not need a motion to ask the agent to do something? No, I don't think we need a motion to ask the agent to do something. But correct me if I'm wrong. Um, before we shoot back to animals. Uh, I would like to make a motion, um, Gary, uh, Gail was not here September 25th, so I'd like to make a motion to accept the minutes of the meeting as printed for September 25th. Do I hear a second? Second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So right back to horses. Moving right along. So that's the next one on the list.
Uh, horses, donkeys, mules, ponies, emu, ostriches, and any other not mentioned. For personal use, up to three animals, $10 per animal, max 25 If you have a stable, a stable is three or more horses, it's a max of 25 Any questions, discussion? No, I think, Gary, what you were leading to was the no fee on the rabbits. Yes, but maybe I jumped ahead. Okay. Um, so, on the equine... Mm -hmm. $10 per animal, up to three. Yep, stable. So a stable th three plus horses. So if someone has Sheila, why do we even have a separate line item for up to three animals and a stable for three plus horses? I, I, if I have no idea. Beca I, I'm because asking because because you, you're dealing with the different identi identities. You're dealing with um, emus, the hostages. The um, hostages. hostages, the hostages. <laughs> Watch the news. Mm. <laughs> the esquine. Um, the per, up to three animals could be a bunch of different. Could be mm -hmm. everything, and then the three stable horses is twenty five. So the second, the second line stable three horses covers your horses, and the up to three animals covers the other animals mentioned in that line. Well, then the question that I have, which is blaring out at me, is is that every horse needs to be in a stable or some kind of coverage, right? Um, it's, it's semantics. You know, a stable, you, know, you have a barn. Or, I mean, you know, a barn, yeah. If you have more than three horses, you consider it to be maybe a professional stable as opposed to just somebody with three horses in but, their barn. But three horses is still $25. Mm-hmm, right. And my understanding was the most anybody could pay, say they had three goats, uh, say they had three emus and um, three horses, the most they're going to pay is 25 correct? 25 for the three me emus, and then they're going to pay another 25 for the three horses. Mm. It's not clear, so I guess you're going to... Yeah, see, this is because another we, one that I've you look tried, at it, when you look well, at this it. This is the way that it was, we defined it before when we were doing the permitting. The personal use was the stable was covered the horses, and the other ones, up to three animals, covered uh, the donkey, the mules, the ponies, the emus, the ostriches. The, the most I've ever charged anybody is $25. Yeah. No matter what, how, how, so say somebody has 49 chickens. Two goats. Right. Four they horses. Stop. They still only pay twenty five bucks, even though I think that's why I wanted to raise it. And the poultry would be twenty five bucks itself, right? And then the goats would be another twenty, but they only pay. So I guess I, you need to clarify that. See that's well see I think it's I'm sorry, Mr. No, go, Fine. No, go. I think it should be twenty five dollars a year per category category than twenty five dollars a year. I think it's broken I think it should be twenty five dollar per category. I guess because if you have with no cap at all. So like if I had twenty five dollars worth of poultry, twenty five dollars worth of bovine and twenty five dollars worth of rabbits and equine. So I'd be paying hundred bucks. Is that it? Hundred twenty-five. Hmm. You. We've never charged more than twenty-five dollars a property Basically address. Per, yeah, property. Yeah. Property address. More than twenty-five dollars a year. Correct. So that has to be made clear. I don't know how you want. To. Yeah. 
because without me being told of just coming in and saying I have two horses and then I want to, you know, I it's broken down by category. Um, so now it's fifty cents, five dollars, ten dollars, twenty-five dollars, and rabbits are a dollar per animal. Minks and chinchillas. Um, the whole fee structure reads unclearly. Maybe it's the fact if it's $25. I mean, we have to account for, on the application, they're accounting for specifically what types of animals they have, right? Right. On the first page of the application, okay, are you a stable? Um, what kind of animals do you own, rent, number of buildings, are there water? And then you go on and you fill out the next sheet, the second sheet. If we're charging, t why don't we just charge $25 a property address? Still accounting for the animals, but still making it a $25 fee. A minimum of $25? Yeah. So what if someone has two rabbits? Mm. Or two... I know, no, I know. It, no, it's... Mm-hmm. Smaller than, more than, chickens, roosters. I don't know, I think this is, I think... It breaks it down, but maybe then there is a, another bold line saying no single property address can be charged in excess of or max of $25 a year. You know, when you mention the 25 years, 25 per household, Madam Chair, I'm going back to the surrounding town. Not, not that that's the best solution the surrounding towns, but I see Hanover. Hanover has a flat fee of $25 a year for any number of livestock, mm -hmm. similar to what you're throwing out for discussion now. Mm -hmm. Yet I look at Halifax. Now, Sheila, I think you compiled this list. For Halifax, you said there are no regulations for poultry, but there's no information here of ha what Halifax does for any of the other types of well, animals not, here. And then, but I, there is no fee in in Halifax, because it says none. And the asterisk was just, is, at the time we were talking about, the second topic that we were discussing was chickens and roosters. Okay, so for Halifax, regardless of the number of animals, rabbits, horses, nothing? Nothing. And yeah. Duxbury is a flat fee of 20 bucks, non-commercial. $40 for commercial. Now, all these fees are waived if you have a 61A, if you're actually a farm. A farm, the right to farm, mm -hmm. yeah. So you don't mean like... So not all of them are going to be affected. It's only going to be the people with the private, on the private part. Mm-hmm. And Hanson, an initial registration fee of $100 for horse? Yes. And then the renewal is $10. For a horse, it's $75. But it's $100 for all the, all the horses. So if you had four horses, it would cost you $100 the first year. $40 a second year. But if you had one horse, still $100. Correct. So we... I'm not saying there's an inconsistency because every Kingston time... Has, and Kingston has no fees. Yeah. So, and the only livestock in Marshfield is for indoor pigs. Um, Norwell didn't even return the phone call. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm in no way, shape, or form comparing this to what I'm about to say, but I, I look at the town of Needham, who was the first community in the country to raise the smoking age from 18 to 21. You know, how they did it, what, what amount of research that they, they did, but, you know, so it, it, 
my point is it's, n it's nice to have some information about the other towns, but I think we as a board are smart enough and, and to say what's best mm -hmm. for Pembroke. And, and mm -hmm. there might be some inconsistencies within these other towns, so it's, it's helpful to have this information. But we've got to come up with something logical, fair, mm -hmm. consistent for the residents of Pembroke. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know what that is. Um, you know, when it, I don't know uh, when when I threw out the discussion of thirty-five dollars, I threw that out because, and I ha I've had a discussion with Sheila, and she had explained to me that the way we did it was twenty-five dollars maximum regardless of the number of animals mm -hmm. that's why I thought I've raised it yet your interpretation may have been $25 as a max on poultry 25 on bovine 25 on equine 25 on rabbits mm -hmm. which is a hundred so mm -hmm. in my mind it, that, that's perhaps a little excessive right because when I'm looking at this right it it's max $25 so five dollars per animal okay let's go to bovine Five dollars per animal, max twenty five dollars a year. Okay, so I have one of those, so I have five. But let's say um, any number. So so I would have to have say I had six. Um, I had two cows and three goats, so that's six. That would technically be thirty, but it would only be twenty five dollars a year. I looking at the form see the categories right. of a max of 25. Per category. Per yeah. category, not per household. Yeah. Right. The way it's set up here, anyone would, I would think, would think, would interpret it the same way. By looking at the form. That is how I interpreted it, but then I was told by the health agent that it wasn't off. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you, you need to, whatever you decide to do, it, it should be yeah. Right. And getting the form right is secondary. It's, you know, coming up with the most logical fees and then making sure the form is clear and logical okay. and reflects what we're trying to do as a board. Okay. Okay. Correct. So I have a question. We've addressed at least the poultry. Mm -hmm. Do you want to table this for the next meeting? I think. Uh, or do you, does anybody have any discussion or motion or? Well, part Anything of that you feel that we can... Well, I'll say one thing. When you say just table it, you know, this is, an, this is an example why I wish our health agent was here. I wish our health, you know, I'd like to hear our health agent say, well, you know, my interpretation since I've been around has been 25 max. Or, mm -hmm. or the previous health agent told me, like, right. I'd like, to hear, I'd like right. to hear from the horse's mouth, so to speak. No pun intended. I mean, you can contact her. You can ask her. Mm -hmm. Or I can ask her for you. Yeah, and, and she's, and so she, oh yeah, I didn't mean, I didn't yeah, mean and, and she's not, so, but she's not here, so with that being said, I think that we need to get interpretation, we mm -hmm. would like that more fully explained, and we will bring it up at our next scheduled meeting. But I have a question for you, mm -hmm. and actually for both of you, the board member to my left and to my right, if this form were correct, and any logical person would say, well, that's a maximum of $25 per category. I'm just curious in each of your opinion. Would that feel excessive? So if someone had, if someone maxed out in each one of these categories, poultry, bovine, et cetera, et cetera, would, it, would we feel that we would be doing a disservice to the residents if someone had to come in and, and pay a minimum of $100, a 25 max per each category? Is that like way out of line? I'm just I, 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 if there is a menagerie of a whole bunch of animals, I don't think we, like, we can take out the bunnies, okay? Because most people have I mean, one the numbers, right? bunny it, in the in a dog a or rabbit, basically, right? Mm -hmm. Right. No, it's fr it's well, free. Right, but but Zero to for, five. The, for the sake of argument, let's, let's just say they're a buck apiece. I know the first five are free, but. Why would they be a buck a piece if, if birds are only 50 cents a piece? I don't know, but they're a buck a piece once you get they're over bigger. five. 
Let's see, that's why I wanted a buck a piece. I was looking for consistency. Um, so if you had, I mean, that would mean you had 25 rabbits, right? Ooh. Chances are, if you had 25 rabbits, you're bringing I'd have 50 you're the a next. Palm. Chinchilla, okay. a mink, you're not going to just, a lot of people are going to raise them for for profit. And it's it's going to be like a breed dog versus... They're a breeder. Yeah. And then that falls under a different <coughs> category altogether for breeding. Yeah, yes. I don't know how that works. I mean, I don't, I don't issue anybody a license that they can breed. Well, it's like a dog kennel. We don't allow dog kennels. I know, but there's a fee. If you, is it, uh, there's my animal thing. In the bylaws, we don't have to, we're not allowed to have kennels. Breeders, though, not kennels, breeders. Are we going to dog breeders? This? We were. I was just kind of trying to close it with. I was curious okay. of your opinion and Donna's opinion mm -hmm. on okay. would a hundred dollars be an excessive amount if somebody if somebody had in each category enough birds, et cetera, et cetera, where they hit the max mm -hmm. twenty five, twenty five, twenty five, twenty five. Would would that feel excessive if we were charging a household a hundred dollars for all those animals? So for the poultry category, you'd have to have over 25 birds, right? I mean, over 50 birds. Over 50 birds. Yeah, over 50 birds. Over 50 birds. Mm -hmm. So the livestock's ex still all kept together, right? Show you a buck. The, the livestock files? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm sick. I mean, yeah. I don't think... I think, think bunnies, I think bunnies should go down to 50 cents per hand. Okay. Mm, that's the consistency. Okay. <laughs> well, well, yeah. Right. But uh, okay. All right. So oh, you can table it. Yeah. If, so but I didn't get an answer from either one right. of you. So I'm gonna I'm gonna turn around and I'm going to table it for further discussion next meeting. I would like to see the health agent shed some light on how that was perceived in the very beginning. Um, following that is the livestock complaint form. We had asked um, Sheila to come up with a form. This is her second go around. This happens to be the most recent. The first one is Kerry O'Brien. Mm -hmm. This is the most recent complaint about the chickens running amok on Old Cart Path. Is that the, the complaint was the September 21st. It's all in order. Yeah, I can. Excuse all me, right. Madam Dagny, would you mind if I excuse myself from the rest of the meeting? Um, no, by all means. I'm you okay? Not feeling too well. Okay. 7.41. Okay. All right. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye, Gail. Bye, Gail. Feel better. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Feel better, Gail. Thanks, Jeff. So the one with Carrie O'Brien? She has everything in order, Gary. Yeah, that I was looking at okay. the material that I brought. So, so how she reworked it was she okay. went yep. to back page. So we have the complainant's name, we have the owner's name, we have location, we have the type of animal, we have um, any other witnesses, the actual complaint date on the bottom, the complainant's signature, why this person wasn't able to come in and sign the form. And then on the back for office use, basically, that the health agent did, in fact, um, go out to the property, drove around, didn't see any chickens nor the owner, and then went back and did see the owner. So this form, um, my opinion in this form is, this form may, I think all the information is here, and it it is not... To me, I'm not going to be using this on a daily basis. So if Sheila feels that she needs to maybe change it up or maybe needs to add something, I think all the important information is listed. I'd like to say that I like her second run on her complaint form. Further with that, the next one is the one that we were dealing with in regards to Mattachesa Street. Yep. So it was an open complaint. It actually, there's no date down here. It was the beginning of July. 
um, Sheila is still checking on what the actual first date of the complaint received. But as you see on the back page, it's continually updated all the way down. Page two may be added, page three may be added, but it is an ongoing property address. So I think she did a good job on that. Is this the, I know you were talking about the, the appearance of the form. Is this the most recent date, do you know? Yes, actually, um, if you look at that, she started on the 4th, the 5th, and the 6th, uh, the 8th. She's actually been out there at 4.30 in the morning. She, our health agent. Our health agent. Um, oh, you have 6.20 and then 4.30 in the morning on Tuesday between 4.30 and 6.30. She was, our health agent was there again on the 5th at 5.30 for 20 minutes, did not hear anything. On the 8th, the same thing at 6.20 for 20 minutes, no violations. So we have not had any violation calls with the exception of the 4th. Of October. Uh, well, she, she, there was one on the 29th of September, the first, and then the fourth. Okay, so on the first, reluctantly, also Saturday. But um, the health agent hasn't been able to hear them herself. Has not been able to hear them herself, and she has been going out there since the first through the 8th at different hours of the morning and has not actually heard any noise. Sheila, on the form on Mattachesic, any reason why you, you haven't populated these fields up here on the top? Well, we didn't have the form at the time, okay. and so it's just backtracking to okay. um, find the information. Okay. And then when I, uh, on the, the um, that I had, uh, the first call that I got from Astucci, no longer have that date and time that I called. Okay. Uh, I do save, like, you know, the voicemails that come in, I do have those saved. Okay. On the form for yeah. Manakisa, the one that we're discussing now, yeah. uh, and I'm, I'm right at the top here. So for type of animal, we've well, got rooster. Yeah. Could you put roosters and then put in parentheses the number? I could. Just so we it's a free form. I mean, you can do whatever you yeah, want. Yeah, just so we have the number of roosters on the premises, okay. if that's all right. Yep. And there's a spelling error. Just, yeah, I just saw that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, well, it looks well, good. Down below, a nature complaint. Roosters row with row crow as early as 4 a.m. Mm -hmm. mm hmm Yeah, the form so looks good. Done. Yeah. And I think that, you know, as situations arise, she'll be able to make the added things that make her job easier in taking any yeah. complaints Just that come forward. Sheila, has, mm -hmm. um, has the, have you heard anything from the owner, or by you I mean the have as our office, the Board of Health? No, but if you um, go through, I personally know, but if you go through the health agent's report, she did meet with that party, and with Mr., uh, well, Mr. Thorne wasn't available. Uh, so Sabrina stepped in. I believe if you look at the um, health agency report, uh, I want to say it was Thursday. It was uh, um, October 5th. There were no violations. Then on the 3rd, she investigated. Um, September 27th, Wednesday, September 27th, um, she had a meeting. Um, late afternoon. I attended a late afternoon meeting with the rooster owner at her request and at the request, request of the DMI director. We discussed what the process will be moving forward. And do you know what that process was? 
Uh, that, you know, there, yes, we would take complaints, but we, we could not act and find her based on the complaints made by other parties that the, the, the health agent, our staff, Pembroke staff, would have to hear the booster crow in order for a fine to be issued. Who made that ruling? Say that again? I on the advice of counsel. Okay. That Mr. The, DM, the D, DMI director directed the health agent that she would have to hear the violation herself. Okay. <laughs> okay, so. so. That's why she's been going out like, you know, different times of the, you know, early in the morning. Out. I mean, the rooster can crow all day long after 7 o'clock on Monday through Friday after 8 on but that, that did not change or alter the motion that was made. If, they, if, if Lisa hears them crowing, then she has to issue a fine. Okay. But we have, but an employee of the town of Pembroke okay. has to verify. Okay. So, if somebody they is... They staff, so I don't know if they mean... So if somebody is woken up at 4.30 in the morning from a crowing rooster, then they call and they put in a complaint. Now, 4.30 is because they can't put in the complaint until the office opens at what time? Well, they can call at 4.30. I'll get it when I get here. So okay. Here so, but at 4.30, so after the fact, then the health agent has to verify that the rooster cr has to hear it, but now it's already but crowed. But cause her to continue to her, well, right now she is continuing her investigation, and she stops by there um, three times a week, not the same day. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I guess I just have a problem with saying to Mr. Homeowner, geez, you're not telling the truth when they're... We're not saying they are telling the truth, but... But the, the health agent the council, has to, on the advice, okay. On the advice of counsel. Okay. Probably to prevent some type of a lawsuit. Yeah. Okay. All right, so she's going to still have to be inconvenienced getting up anywhere between 4.30 in the morning and before 7 a.m. during the week to be able to go and sit outside and see if a rooster crows. Okay. I think on the, on, the, on the advice of counsel, it clearly makes it very onerous to validate if the roosters are problematic prior mm -hmm. to 7 a.m. Okay. All right, moving right along. Um, tobacco uh, program participation. Um, we are going to be part of the consortium in regards to applying for the grant. And this is the gal I think you had wanted to call. And I didn't because of some correspondence that said that we aren't going to be participating yes. in it. And, I and then we have a letter of intent that um, the Hanover Board of Health um, intends to apply to be the lead agency for the funding yep. under the Municipal um, Public Health Policy Program. Okay, so they're going to kind of be the lead on it. And then participating agreement is attached, which has to be signed by both Lisa and I. And unless your opinion has changed, mine hasn't, so I'm assuming we're moving forward with this. I would agree. Okay, so I'm just going to... motion? We would like to make a motion to accept participating in the municipality agreement in regards to tobacco and public health policy programs RFR number 190128. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.
Um, Madam Chair, you had asked if you know we would collect the information that they required. Yes. So that was that form in there. The okay. That was um, collected. In Perfect. There was, we had a deadline in regards to um, number of facilities in our town. Correction, I haven't sent it yet, so now that you, you want you to sign that yep. form, I will send it. Okay. okay. So may I keep this copy? Yes, we all have a copy. Okay. And then we have who our retailers are as of 2017 is listed. Are you keeping that copy of this? No, I signed it and put it okay, thank you. face down. You're welcome. Okay. The next, and I don't know, Gary, if you are prepared, um, we have information um, that we'd like to have everybody read in regards to the next topic of our uh, accomplish items that we wanted to accomplish for this year. The gang of 13. You got it, which is now, I think, 14 or 15. We're keep, we're, I thought we're calling it the gang of... I we can we staring it. at the gang yep. of 13, and <laughs> that was kind of... Okay, you're okay. saying with the should we, Title Should five? we be requiring a soil test with Title Five examinations? The health agent while not here, has weighed in in regards to pros and cons. Um, they are as listed, as well as... Uh, was I the only one that got this? No, no, we all got it. Little booklet? Yep. Okay. So I would like to take the time to be able to read this booklet. Yeah, that's just uh, um, for you to have going forward when we do... When, you yep. Know, when you start getting these... Put it um, in my folder. Yeah, and you fold them my with binder. the livestock manual, the bylaws. The, it's just a little handy. Uh, there's another sheet with it that has a drawing. Yep, on the, so on awesome. the, on the, the soil, soil profile. Yeah, it's actually up there on the wall. But Did you draw that? No. <laughs> so on, on this game of 13 topic, on the agenda, it says, should we, should we be requiring a soil test with Title V exams? Discuss and prepare to vote at our next meeting, October 30th. What I would like to ask of our health agent. So the form that she prepared, mm -hmm. and I'm holding in my right hand, pros, cons. Oftentimes when I research making a purchase online, I might see it set up the same way, which is great that she did it, pros, cons. But also there would be a, a third category, which would, call it what you want, call it verdict, final opinion. But she I can't give I, it final. That's not, she can't guide us well, in, in a decision I didn't, process. well, I'm asking, She's out. She outlined some of the pros and cons, which were really perhaps. Per, I'm sorry. It's, it's only one, one right. pro. Um, but I would like. I would like her. I would like to ask the health agent her final opinion, as we often do when we have variances before us. I'm not. I don't feel that that it would be guiding the board. I would, if the health agent were here and we were discussing this topic, I'd be looking at her right now and saying, thank you for taking the time and outlining the pros and the cons and the final analysis. What's your opinion? And then the board would ultimately vote and make that decision. But I would, I'm would i simply asking for the health agents at I the end of the day, final opinion. That's all. Um, if you don't think we should... No, I don't agree with that because I think if she's giving us the pros and cons... We, as a three-member board, have to make an independent decision outside of that, whether it's her, whether it is whether it is the health agents, your opinion, or how, you know, your opinion, okay? Because when we have a variance, she will say, we have this, this is the situation, I've seen this and I've seen that. To me, that would be her steering the board. I, I, yeah, correct. I, I agree with you saying, but but just looking at the pros, right? The pro that's here. Mm -hmm. So the board will receive an accurate evaluation of soil type and accurate high grind water or elevation for all Title Five inspections. It's not really true because you don't look at the Title Five, right? 
Title five inspections come in. You, you, as a board, you don't look at it, correct? Well, it is in the it is in the it is in the square. It's off to the the right side, which gives the layer compound. No, no, I understand what what it is, but you know, it says the board would receive an accurate evaluation. It, it comes into this office, but you guys don't actually look at it, right? You don't look at Title Five inspections. So, I, I, I'm, 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 I guess my question is, is what does the what does the soil eval do for for us? What does it do for the homeowner? What does mm -hmm. it do the, for the home buyer? Mm -hmm. Right, because really, it, and that's I that's, think this sounds ro awful, but it, it doesn't do anything for the board, right? Which I think is a better breakdown on this particular topic of what does it do for the homeowner, for the inspector, for the town. And for the home buyer, right? Because usually you don't have a Title Five until you get ready to sell it. Correct. Correct. So... That's a better breakdown for this topic. So what does it, what does it do for, for those people? For the homeowner? Well, really for the home buyer, right? It gives you an indication how close that is actually to failing, right? That would, yes. It would. How much saturation is in the ground from, and I'm, I guess I'm really talking about legion fields. Mm -hmm. And I, really, I'm not a health agent, so I, I guess I'll stop right here. But then the cons, there's three of them. So my question, I guess, to the health agent, is there really only one pro? And... Who's it pro for? Well, that, that's why I asked for a final opinion, because this, whole, this gang of 13 originated, in part, our health agent doing a little that brainstorming, some mm -hmm. things, and the fact that should, be, should, uh, should we be requiring a soil test with Title V, I find it strange, based upon the pros and cons, how that particular topic appeared on the list. So I asked myself... The it, reason it is something we're reason missing. it came on the list, and I remember this specifically. The reason it came on the list is, is the majority of towns around us have now gone to requiring, with their Title Fives, that a soil evaluation test is done with all their Title Fives. Okay. That was why she when, when she we looked at being a more effective policy and procedural vehicle for the town and the Board of Health. That was one of the things. These, This is something that you may want to look at. So do you want, a, for next time, you want a poll of the towns to see who does it? I think the towns, I think who does it benefit, how does it benefit? And then, and are there any other pros? And just because other towns around us require it? Why do they require it? And I think armed with that information, we can take the pros and cons without the health agent being here and be able to make a statement. If Lisa can't be here, if she can't articulate it, maybe we'd like to ask when, if Shane happens to come in, if he could maybe speak on this as being a, you know, or anyone, Grady, Morris, anyone. Why? Why would a soil evaluation be done? Could we put a phone call into the other surrounding towns that... Yeah, we, that was one of the things she's going to do. So then we, we wouldn't vote on this at our next meeting? We would have some of that information for us I at think the next we need, meeting? I think we need further information before we can put it to any type of a vote. So further discussion. Right? Yep, further discussion.
Okay. All right. Now, I just, I know Mr. McLaurin did not come here, but can you just take a look at that sheet? Because that's the format we're going to use going forward. The, um, I just really need to this, up. Sheila, the scheduled, scheduled appointment, appointment board, board action. Board action. Did we did cover everything about that, correct? Right? Or on the agenda? Um, yeah, I'm just looking for mine. Sheila, is it, is it the, the form itself that you're asking how the board feels? And the content, if that's the way we want to go. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and And was this prepared by yourself and the health agent? Together? Is it? Yes. And that's where that little booklet that you have came into play because I okay. need to understand. Because if you look somewhere right there. Suggested there. Above the select uh, suggested mode suggested motion. That paragraph above it. All impervious material, that one? Yeah, and it said to the layer of C1, and I was like, well, what is C1? Okay. And C1 is, is that picture. I like the form, Sheila, <coughs> and it would be, we would have this prior to, prior to, we would have this at the meeting, or we, we would have, have it prior to, to in, in our it would folders. Be in your packet. Would you include um, any additional drawings, any maps? Any? Uh, it, it would depend on uh, if they were... Okay, on a case-by-case? Case. Yes, because you're going to have in, your, in your, hmm. your book of... I mean, clearly this is, this is nice as opposed to looking at the agenda and it just says, you know, in this case, you know, 212 Monroe Street. Yeah. So having a little bit of backstory before coming in here I think is excellent. <coughs> and again, the so suggested I, I motion still stays with move to approve slash deny. Yeah. She doesn't. She doesn't give any opinion. Yeah. yeah, but there are plenty. I mean, I've been on the well. I haven't been on the board as long as you. Mm hmm But there's there's plenty of times that our health agent renders an opinion. I love our health agent. You do? I do. But, and she knows a lot. She just forgets that we don't know that. All, you know, all the backstory. Mm -hmm. So what I attempted there is to stop, slow down, back up the bus. Mm -hmm. What are you talking about? You know, what, does that, what is C1? Mm -hmm. then, she's, then she pulled out those books and I was like, you know. Um, like the C1 is actually on that, the, the one, the picture I gave you earlier, I kept one home. Now this one, Sheila. Yes, that would be the medium sand. As, a, as an example. 26 to 120 feet. This is one motion. But there have been variances that have come before us where there's been several variances. So wh whomever is ultimately responsible for pre preparing this document prior to the meeting, which is probably going to be you, it, 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 I'm not going to be. I'm not going to suggest it would be onerous, but you could end up having to. Mm -hmm. It could be a lot of work for There's you. Out there that's coming. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. I don't think this makes your job any easier. I, I think, and and I don't know. I think it's being more used as an educational tool. This board, if if any sitting board member doesn't understand that 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 variance right there. I would take issue. You know, this is this is background material, which kind of says where it's located. If if somebody didn't happen to know where Lorner Lorner is, um, I did leave out some work. It's very slow. It's heavily marked with predominant, you know, 
features. Do you, do you like this or you feel it's too much information? Um, I think it's too much information because this was just one simple, um, you know, a reduction from five to four feet. Now let's get into the rest of it where sieve analysis is. And I mean, it's, I think it's making more work for the secretary, but because this was just simple. Right. They're not all right. like this. It was this. also a first go. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's a good learning tool. I'd I like to understand what, what's going on before, you know, even, I'm not making any decisions, but if I'm dealing with it, I want to know how it works and, mm -hmm. and why we do that. You know, because I was saying, well, what's the difference, you know, going from five feet to four feet? Mm -hmm. And the key there is it, it prevents, it, it allows them not to have to put a pump in. Yeah. I agree 100% in spirit with you working on this, and, mm -hmm. and I think we could just tweak it as we go along, unless you don't want her to prepare these. I but you got to remember, part of the, the effort that goes in before this is talking to Lisa because the health agent's not here. Hence, that's going to bring us back to a whole nother discussion. Right, but I mean, she's not here. If you have all the information on that piece of paper, or two pieces of paper, or the one that's coming, that's probably going to be five pieces of paper, and you get it as soon as I get it, which I hope would be a week before the meeting, to give you a chance to look at it and break it down. Well, I, I, I'm going to speak as a board member myself. I think the ultimate goal is to get the health agent back here to our meetings. I understand. I understand. I understand. Um, so maybe until that point, I want to just accept something like this and say, well, we're not going to have the health agent um, because the health agent is not here during our meetings that we're going to refault to this. I think um, what I would like to put on the agenda also for next meeting is the discussion if the health agent is not going to be coming to our meetings um, due to um, extenuating circumstances then I would like to request that for each board me meeting that she is phones in and she is a part of the meeting by telephone. For the entire meeting? Correct. I'm sorry. So is that a motion or a request or what is that? I think it's a talking point at this point. I think it is a talking point at this point. I, I, I really think that it is important. So you want to add it to the... Do <coughs> okay. So to, to discuss it at the next meeting. Yes, and see how the rest of the board members feel about it. Because I'm starting to feel very strongly. I understand we've had this discussion before, but... Um, I think that for this board, there's no reason why she cannot phone in, be accounted for, and be there for when these questions come up. And, and we have to have, uh, there, there's starting to become a lot of go-betweens. The, the animal the animal fee could have been resolved and done with if we just had another voice here. But now we have to wait for another two weeks to get the answer and then discuss it again. I'm frustrated. So unless anybody has anything else they want to talk about. And what are we doing about 9 more to F? Did we ever get to that? No, we tabled it because we were waiting for Sean, but we can we can vote on the motion. Would you right. like to make a motion? Yeah, fine. I am moving to accept the variance as put before the board 
for nine Lorna Ave, ex moving the, uh, accepting the groundwater table from five feet to four feet. Second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Okay. And again, unless there is anything else we would like to discuss at this point, I would like to motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. It, at 8.13, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And here are the signs.